questions that have come in. Great questions for Adam. So Adam, if you wanna check out the chat, maybe you could respond to a few of those. Sure. And I'm gonna invite Elisa Peterson to join us now. She's gonna lead us through making a hexagon book. She'll be using her overhead camera and I'm gonna go ahead and spotlight that. And if you wanna make her overhead view bigger, you can use that slider that I talked about earlier that's in between the presentation and the panelist view. And that will make it better for you. All right, take it away, Elisa. Thank you. Could you go to the next slide for me? On the presentation. Okay, so um, I wanted to tell you that this template that we have for you was originally created by Jamie uh, Lynn Schaefer. And it's a great little book that is easy and it's customizable. And when we send out our resources after the event, we have actually a few other versions for you. This is the original version that you have, and um, it, it makes pretty good use of the paper. We have a smaller version as well, and you could photocopy this and make it larger, especially on drawing paper, which is great. Um, this version tells you all of the folds and cuts that you need to do, but we also have another template that doesn't have any writing on it. So if you're good and you understand it, you don't have to print it with all of these words. And then we've made um, a template in, Adobe, it's an Adobe uh, PDF that you can actually open up and type into if you would like to have um, some typed words on your document and you can save that and then use the template again and type other things in it. So that, that's kind of fun. And then we also made a large one like this, and this would be an individual um, spread of two pages where you have a blank one where you could draw and then one on this side with lines so students could write and this would be great for a student to make a larger book or maybe a class book where each student contributes one or two pages. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you um, on our original template. I hope that you have that and that you have cut it out or you could start cutting it out now. We're going to cut all the way around the outside edge, then down this little line and we're going to remove the centerpiece. And I've already done that here for my myself. And the first thing that you'll do after it's cut out is to begin folding it. And even though this side has the words on it, I find that to make your pages work out the best, um, it's better to start with it flipped over when you fold it. And you can start on either side and just fold each hexagon back and forth in an accordion style like this. Um, I sometimes hold things up in the air when I fold them because I'm an adult, but for children, I always say, keep it down on the table and um, line up your corners and press it down. So when I see, especially younger, younger kids, um, first and second grade folding up in the air, I remind them it works a little bit better if you keep it down on the table. Okay, so if you want to just do a simple short book, you, all you need is one page and you can see, that the pages turn really well. And, and then also, if you want, you can open it up and see all of the pages at the same time. But if you are working with students that want to add, add more information to their book, they can always add another set of pages and use all of them or cut some off and just use the ones they want. I'm going to um, show you. I didn't fold this one up and that's okay. But if you wanted to, you would just uh, take one of these pages and put glue on it and then set this one right on top above it. And then you've got this great book that almost looks like a figure eight. If you added more pages, you could put one here and have it come off this, this direction and just keep going and then have them all folded up. But for this version, I'm just going to use one. Okay, once you have all your pages folded, um, you could set that aside. Later in the webinar, I'll show you lots of ideas of what you can put inside the book. And depending on, your preference, you could have the students make the book all the way and then add their information inside. Or you could, at this point, add all of the information to your pages and then later put the cover on top. But I'm going to show you now the cover. So um, in the template, there's this centerpiece right here. You can pull that out and use that to trace the cover. It's basically the same size as the other pages. And if your students are really great at cutting and this is nice and clean, you can use that as your 
um, piece to trace. We also have another one up here in the corner, just in case they make a kind of mess of this one as they're cutting it out, they could trace that one as well. So for covers, I am using a cereal box that I just traced two of those hexagons right onto it. And you can see, I, I put them together when I trace it just to make my cutting a little bit simpler. Um, with really younger kids, um, you can omit this step of you, that I'm going to show you of using a cereal box and decorative paper and just have them use cardstock as their covers. That would make this project go a lot quicker, but it's really fun to be able to use fancier paper and have a little bit heavier covers if your students can um, are up to the challenge. So I've gone ahead and cut out my two covers here. And I have this plain yellow paper. Um, you might have decorative paper or colored paper in your kit. You could use anything that you wanted. But for this, we'll go ahead and um, put glue on one cover. And when kids use a glue stick on something like this, they're often going to go off the edge and come toward you. And that would make a big glob of glue there. So I always say kind of just go around the edges, but stay on the piece. And then I'm going to turn that over and press it into my decorative paper. Now you notice I actually cut these little rectangles or it could be squares out um, instead of just putting this right onto one large piece of paper. And this is helpful for kids because they need to have a little space around their paper. And I'll show you that in just a minute. And if they're trying to gauge that themselves on a larger piece, sometimes they'll put them too close together. So if you give them two smaller pieces and say, make sure there's a gap all the way around it, that just is a little helpful. Now that that's pressed down, I think it's helpful to have kids go on this side and use this sort of fleshy part of their hand to, to press it down all the way around the edges. So I'll do the, the next one. Okay. There we go. I'll just do that kind of quickly. Oops. And glue that down as well. And then, um, we're going to trim away the extra paper that we don't need. And I like to envision about a quarter of an inch of extra. If you get it too close, it's a little bit harder to do the next step. If you have it a little bit too far away, that, that's, that's fine. So a little more than a quarter of an inch would be okay. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of snip those edges off. Now there are two options for folding in um, these edges. The, both of them start the same way. It really helps quite a bit if the students can go ahead and um, fold all of the edges and sort of crease them up before we add glue. And um, I'm hoping that you guys are working alongside me at home with your own books. This is such a simple process, I bet, that you can sort of glance at the screen and and stay with me. But I'm just folding all of my edges. Then I'm going to add some glue. And this is a great time to save your desk by having a little piece of scratch paper to put down obviously for, for gluing on. Okay, so for the first option, I'm just going to glue all the way around and fold my edges down. So I'll do that pretty quick. And if I were to just turn my book quite a bit, um, I would end up getting the glue on the, the, the scratch paper onto the nice side of my book. So you can, if you need to turn it, you can kind of turn it together or just hold it down with your one hand and, and glue around. Okay, now for this, oh, I missed this side. But this um, simple version, we're not gonna cut the corners at all. And I, I'm, I find it works great anyway. Just start at one side and fold it up and keep working way around and kind of just press where you get that little bit of uh, bulk of extra paper. And if you're using quite heavy paper, this you will have a lot of bulk right here, which would be a little bit annoying, but not impossible. You can have students go back around and give it a pinch at all the corners, or even turn it upside down and, and press it down like that. So that's the easiest way to do this. But for a little bit more advanced students, what you could do instead is have them trim off this extra paper. And I'm going to imagine a straight line running this way. And I just trim that away on all of the corners. 
I kind of go almost all the way up to the cardboard, but not quite. If they went all the way up to the cardboard, that'd be okay too. And so then with that out of the way, it'll just reduce a little bit of the bulk in the corners. So we'll go ahead and put my glue all the way around and get those down as well. Um, you probably know glue stick can dry fairly fast. So this is a quick process to, to glue it and fold them down. And then just like before, since I'm pre-creased, I can hold this up in the air and just fold and pinch all the way around. And that goes fairly well and pretty quick. Then I'm going to um, fold this up so that I don't have fresh glue to set my pieces back down onto. That's one thing you can talk to the students about is keeping a clean workspace. Okay. And then to put this book inside, I would just glue one side and stick it in and glue the other side and stick it in. Um, since the cover is basically the same exact size as the book, you just want to um, line it up pretty well and press it down. Mine isn't lined up very well, so I can try again. I have a few seconds of work time and then give it a good pinch. Then I'll just glue the other side and stick it down. So, oh, I forgot, I forgot something awesome that I was going to show you. So if your book has a lot of pages in it, sometimes it can get annoying because they'll start, um, it won't stay closed very well. So one thing that you can do is take a piece of ribbon and it's easy with children to just first tape it down on the inside of the cover, look at that, and then go ahead and glue your cover on. I would have put this on both sides had I remembered it on time. But even on one side, if it's long enough, it can kind of work okay. Because what you can do is wrap it around and then tie it here. Kind of fold it over and give it a little, a little tie. And that can hold it closed. Or if I had it on both sides, then I would tie a little bow right there on the edge. That's totally optional. Um, but it's great to kind of keep it closed. And then it's nice having it just on the one side because then I can open it up page by page or turn it around and have the whole large hexagon. What I love about this is kind of what Adam was talking about, how these hexagons all fit together so well. So um, we have all of these hexagons here and they go together to make one large hexagon, which is pretty cool. So this is a blank book. Blank books are great but you'd probably want to fill them up with something. So I'm going to show you a few things that I put in, in my hexagon books. Um, first, this is a large one. This was made by my son and he used that bigger template with the writing lines. And um, in this one, instead of having the hexagon curve around, it will just turn um, straight like a regular accordion. So you can see he did the life cycle of uh, a honeybee. So we have an egg and he's written about it here, larva and pupa and adult and it closes. So this one opens straight. One thing that would be nice about this, you can't quite see it as well as I can, but you could hang this up on a bulletin board and have all of the pages showing. And then at some point take it down and then it would be an artifact that you could keep in the classroom or send home with the student. Okay, I have a few more to show you. Let's see. I don't remember what's on the insides of them until we open them up. Ah, this is a fun one. I looked up <clears throat> information about um, the process of ho making honey. And so um, it says gather nectar, break down the sugars, fill the honeycomb, fan the honey. That's something that's interesting that the bees kind of huddle, huddle together and flap their wings so that the honey can thicken up a little bit, then they cover it with wax. And then a little bit later, you can harvest the honey, but you want to not take too much honey. So that's uh, something. Okay, there's another little book that I created. And this one, you can see I didn't put a ribbon and it does kind of bounce around and, and come open a little bit. 
This one is, um, oh, I used the typing template and added um, words to this one. And it's designed to come open and kind of lay flat. So this is all about the body um, features of a honeybee. And I designed this one a little bit strange. I think if you're gonna type the words in, it works best if you maybe don't do too many pages, but this talks about the head and the thorax, the abdomen, the wings, the legs and the antenna and the exoskeleton. So that's kind of fun. And then I think this is the last one I'd like to show you for now. This little one talks about cues that flowers have that attract the honeybees to come and find them. And so um, it says honeybees are attracted to flowers by visual and olfactory cues. So they like uh, flowers that are showy, that have nectar guides, which can lead them to where they can find that nectar and pollen right in the middle. The size matters sometimes. The color, did you know honeybees don't see the color red, they're attracted to blues and purples. Other pollinators are attracted to other colors. Um, the scent can draw the honeybees in. And also the last one, the shape. Honeybees actually like flowers that are tubular. And they go in kind of like lavender there. So I hope that you made a blank book and that you're thinking about what information about bees would really align well with your grade level. In a little bit, I will walk you through what you can do to um, teach students about how to add their information into their own book. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Elisa. That was great.